Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Introduction to Machine Learning. This is lecture one. Uh, in this uh, lecture, you're going to learn what is learning, um, what are different types of learning, and a roadmap for building machine learning systems in general. Okay, so be, even before we start talking about machine learning, we know that humans learn from experiences from past um, uh, experiences from the data, from, from things that we experience in general, right? So for example, uh, we're looking at this example of a two-year-old who has never seen cars before, right? And we show the child uh, different types of cars, different colors uh, of cars. And based on this experience, based on this knowledge, uh, or based on this data, uh, when the child sees another new car at a later point in time, uh, Okay, that's a weird car, uh, but yeah, the point remains. Um, the child is usually able to figure out or um, recognize that this is also a car, right? So how did the child figure out? It was based on the experience that um, we showed uh, the child different cars, uh, different colors of cars, maybe different models and all of that. And based on the different features, different characteristics of the car, uh, the child was able to recognize that this is what a car looks like, right? So this is how humans learn. Um, and also, like adding to this example, if we show the child a tree, uh, the child is also able to figure out that this is not a car. Why? Because um, obviously the, the features, for example, a car moves, right? The tree does not move. It does not have wheels. It does not look similar and so on. So based on a lot of different... Um, characteristics of cars versus trees, the child is able to figure out that this is not a car, right? So based on the experience, uh, the child learned to figure out, to recognize a certain item, right? So this is how humans learn. So how about if we can translate or transfer this human learning ability to machines, right? So can we do that? Well, the good news is that yes, we can do that. So as I said, humans learn from experiences, from previous data that they've looked at, um, humans can train machines or computers in specific. And how do we do that? Well, we incorporate prior knowledge. And in this particular case, when I'm talking about knowledge for computers, it's nothing but data. Right? So incorporate prior knowledge, prior data specific to the problem and develop tools, which is nothing but algorithms. So we will obviously talk a lot about algorithms in this course. Uh, Right, so develop algorithms to translate this knowledge of data to quantifiable outcomes. So especially uh, the, these algorithms should enable our program to uh, predict things, right? So that's the central theme of machine learning in general. So learning the way humans do can be translated to machines or computers, and that's what machine learning is, right? So we can utilize this knowledge to make predictions, just like with the child example, the child was able to identify that this is a car based on the previous or past data or past experiences, right? And we are able to make data-driven decisions. How? Uh, because based on my, my prior knowledge, based on the data that I've looked at, uh, the, uh, not me, like the child looked at, uh, the child was able to predict that a tree is not a car, right? Or this is how a car looks like. So if, if, if uh, we exposed a new like expose the child to a new model or a different model of a car the child is usually able to recognize that yes it is a car right so in um, summary if we are able to utilize data to answer questions that's pretty much what machine learning is okay so uh, why do we need machine learning two basic reasons in order to make complex tasks easier for us, for example, some routine tasks that have certain set of rules associated with them, for example, driving, image recognition, uh, they can be easily learned from the data that we generate, right? And so these routine tasks can be easily performed by computers as well, because they can learn from this data, the, the routine data that's generated by these routine tasks performed by humans. So that's the first reason why we use machine learning. Second is there are certain tasks be beyond human capability, and then I'm referring to large data sets, especially big data sets, right? Large and complex data sets. So we are essentially looking at deriving meaningful patterns from that data, which is uh, not something that we can do manually, right? So that's where machine learning comes in. And the most important 
uh, aspect of why we use machine learning is adaptivity. Um, if if you're familiar with programming, you know that when we write programs, they're usually rigid, which means they are designed to solve a particular problem in a particular setup, right? Problem in a given setup. Uh, however, uh, with machine learning tools, as we shall see, uh, behavior adapts with a new data and variations. So your algorithm, your code, it adapts to how the changes in data occur, which is why we need machine learning. Okay, so moving on to different types of learning. This is what we'll cover in this course overall. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Okay, so what is supervised learning? Uh, the main goal of supervised learning is to learn or create a model from labeled training data. That's important. This training data or the input data sometimes, right? It has labels. So it has answers to the questions that we're trying to answer, uh, explore, right? And that's what labels are. And then what we do is we feed the, the training data or the label data into the machine learning algorithm, which is nothing but a set of rules, right? And obviously we'll go into a, a, a lot of uh, detail uh, as we proceed in the course. Um, so this input is fed into this machine learning algorithm and together these two uh, make up something that's called a predictive model, right? For example, if we think about like a very basic uh, car example for the child earlier, right? The input data was all those cars uh, the, the car picture that had different like colors of cars, right? Car one, car two, car three, and so on. So that was my training label data. It was already labeled that this is this is a car. Maybe this is a red car, this is a yellow car, and so on, right? And then based on certain set of rules, okay, a car has wheels, uh, a car moves, and so on. That was the algorithm using which the child was ne next able to predict whether a particular object is a car or not, right? So So when a new car arrived or a tree arrived, the child was able to predict whether it was a car or, or, or not, right? So that was my that was the, the child's prediction. So similar to that, uh, this is what supervised learning is. We will feed the algorithm uh, certain training data that has labels, that has already, that has outcomes. So basically we are exposing the algorithm to see what the results should look like and then test it on something that's unknown, right? So then a new car, for example, and then predict whether it's a car or not and so on. Right, so this is the, the fundamental idea behind supervised learning. Uh, we make predictions with supervised learning for two different types of problems. The first is classification problem and the second is regression problem. Definitely we'll go into a lot of detail in the coming uh, lectures, uh, but just to give you an overview, classification is to segregate uh, different uh, types within the, the domain that you're looking at. And regression is predicting a continuous outcome. So essentially we are looking at a relationship between a, predictory, uh, a predictor or an explanatory variable and a response variable. These things might uh, seem hazy as of now, but they're not that, that hazy. Let's look at two examples to further understand what this actually means. Okay, um, so I'm looking at this very basic example called housing uh, prices. Uh, let us assume that we have a data set that gives us, um, and, and like even before that, let's say my the, my problem is that I own, uh, I don't know, 750 square feet house, right? And I'm trying to sell that, right? So for how, like for what price uh, can I sell that, right? So I need an, an estimate of, of that. So I have some prior information, prior knowledge, that's my data. Uh, so I have um, the prices of houses and the size in square feet here. Okay, and here I have the price. Uh, and this is like prior information. This is from other uh, houses that were sold in my area, right? So prices in 100, in, in thousands, right? So basically 100K, 200K, 300K, and so on, right? And size begins from 500, 1000, 2000, and so on, right? And let, let us assume I have like this basic uh, data up here in from my area. So a house basically, which was like 500 was sold at some, something around 150. And then similarly, I have, so these are just like data points, right? So I'm just like trying to plot those. Uh, 
here and here. So just by looking at this data, uh, I know that my house lies somewhere here, right? And I can get a ballpark of like maybe my house would sell at some something around 200, right? Uh, 200K. Just by looking at this data, I can tell. So that, that's a prediction that I just made, although seems really simple. Now, there are um, systematic ways of getting at this prediction, right? So I just like got this ballpark just by looking at the data. But then we can fit a straight line or sometimes even a curve using these data points here, right? And then there is a, a method of doing that, which is called regression, right? So a method of fitting the straight line in this data. And obviously we learn more about it in the lectures coming up. So method of fitting this line is regression, right? So based on this line, I can tell wherever the 750 lies, which is somewhere here, which is around 180. Um, and that would be my prediction for this, right? So this is an idea, th th this gives you an overview of how regression works, right? So this is a type of supervised learning. The second example that I have is credit card fraud detection. So this is slightly different in the sense that I have uh, to uh, predict whether an incoming customer has a higher chance of being fraudulent or not, right? So basically I'm looking at fraud or not. Right? So this is a classic classification problem, again, another type of supervised learning. right? And I have some data in order to determine that. right? So let's say I have data from previous customers uh, such that I check their balance. right? So balance from low to high. right? And I have their income, which is from low to high. Uh, and obviously, we can have like real numbers here, but I'm just taking two points, low to high. I'm not taking any ranges here, right? Uh, let us assume that all those who turned out fraudulent, we denote them by cross and not fraud. We denote them by O, right? So I have this data available. And let us say that, that uh, uh, the not fraud points are scattered like this here, right? And then the... Oh, sorry, yeah, the fraud, I should have only the cross, right, are somehow uh, scattered like this, right? And I can see a pattern here, right? I, see, I can see this, like, clear demarcation uh, somehow, which is not as um, properly defined, but then there is definitely a, a demarcation where I can say that this group is different from this group, uh, based on like whatever features we're looking at. For example, here I'm looking at balance and income, right? So if there is a new incoming customer and I try to put that in this feature space, right? Balance versus income. And then the customer lies somewhere here, right? So this is the, this, this was an unknown customer, so I'm denoting it by U, right? So this unknown customer, when, it, when, when, when it's coming into the system, I can say that the probability of this person turning into a fraud is high because it lies in this, this region or this cluster of uh, fraud um, being more pro prominent, right? Uh, similarly, if there's, there's, a, there's an incoming customer that lies somewhere here, um, I can say, yeah, the, the probability of this customer turning uh, a fraudulent customer in the future is low. Right? So this is a classic example of a classification problem. And obviously, we learn how to get this uh, segregation, uh, what is the optimal way of getting this, and all of that. Right, But this gives you an idea of another type of supervised learning, which is the classification problem. Right. OK, so where we are trying to classify into two groups. And by the way, this is not limited to two groups. It can be more than uh, two groups. Right. So it's not. Uh, limited to that. We can have examples we are trying to segregate it into more than two groups. Okay, uh, next comes unsupervised learning, right? So here we are trying to discover hidden structures, explore structure, and derive meaningful information. Well, what does that mean? Uh, for example, let's say I have, and this is a very classic example, let's say I have this uh, data set, a flower iris data set. We will work with that as well, right? So it has some features of flowers, different flowers, right? Um, so let's say I have petal size and maybe color. I don't remember exactly what all features it has, the data set in itself. But let us assume that it has like color and petal size and all of that, right? 
and we find that there are there that there are some um, uh, data points or observations here, and then there are certain other observations here, and we are able to actually see these clusters in my data set. And let me actually denote them by cross to minimize confusion, right? So if I see these clusters within this, this feature space of petal size versus color, um, I can tell maybe there is a difference between each of these clusters. And let's say maybe that difference, the, the difference is because each one of them belongs uh, to a different species of flowers, right? So that's a hidden pattern that I just like uncovered based on uh, simply looking at this feature space, right? So this is showing something called clustering, right? So I could cluster different um, like uh, subgroups uh, based on the information that I have. Uh, the other is dimensionality reduction. So we will talk a lot about that in the coming lectures, but this is more of which features, for example, this data set could have petal size, size of the plant, size of the, I don't know, the amount of pollen it generates or color and so on. So it can have a lot of features, right? So I have to do some feature pre-processing in order to understand which features are more important than the others and then go and and and. and and explore the feature space, right? So basically compress data into smaller subspace and retain relevant information. So that's what our dimensionality reduction is. So that's how we make predictions with unsupervised learning. And then finally, in a very interesting type of learning, and this is called reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning in which a computer learns to perform a task through repeated trial and error interactions with a dynamic environment. Right, so what, let's let's uh, look at this um, classic dog trainer example. So let's say the dog is my agent, and the trainer is the environment. Right. So what happens is uh, the goal of the this like reinforcement exercise for the dog trainer example is that uh, the trainer wants to train the dog, who's the agent, to complete a task within an environment. Right. So this includes the surroundings of the dog as well as the trainer. So the trainer can issue a command uh, which the dog will observe, right? And then the dog will respond by taking an action. And that action has to be close to the desired behavior. So for example, if the trainer is asking the dog to go and fetch a ball, right? And if the dog uh, just runs and does not fetch fetches a ball, uh, the dog does not get the reward. And so uh, the dog reiterates what uh, he's supposed to do or the agent reiterates and recalibrates, so to say, uh, what he's supposed to do and then performs the action again and uh, keep recalibrating his action until he gets the reward, right? So maybe the reward was a, a candy or something. Uh, I don't know, dogs don't eat candies, right? So a bone maybe, right? So this is based on an agent recalibrating its actions based on the reward or maybe sometimes it's a win-lose situation. Uh, whether the agent is winning based on uh, the environmental setup, right? So we will definitely look at more examples of reinforcement learning in the coming up lectures. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk about the, the overall roadmap of how do we set up uh, our machine learning environment when we're working with problems. And this is what we'll follow throughout when, when we are looking at problems, right? So the first step is always pre-processing in which you will do a training data and a test data uh, pre-processing training is the known data, right? So where, where we know things and then the test data is on which we'll test our algorithm, right? So that's pre-processing. And then deciding the learning, the actual algorithm. Uh, then when we feed the data and the algorithm in the final model, uh, then we need to evaluate how good our predictions are. And then we make the predictions, right? So this is the overall strategy that we're gonna follow throughout the course. Uh, with this, I end this lecture one. In the next lecture, we will begin with an example.